Hi, welcome to Build Picker. I'm John. In this video, we're going to go over Fortnite. I've tested a range of hardware over the past week, a range of CPUs from Intel and AMD, different RAM capacities, speeds and configurations, as well as a whole heap of graphics cards to work out what the best hardware is for you. This is the kind of information we've gathered to inform the builds we've put together over at buildpicker.com, so please do head over and check it out. You'll find a range of builds there specified for particular games where we've done optimization and testing to make sure we're recommending the best possible parts. There's also upgrade and downgrade options so you can tailor all the builds to your needs, as well as a range of filters so that you can get quickly to the build that's going to be best suited for you. Do check out buildpicker.com. So I spent the best part of the last week benchmarking Fortnite in order to get these results. They are all taken in live play, and as such there's a little bit more noise in the data than there might be for a fixed benchmark, but the flip side of that is I think that they're more realistic of actual play conditions. I'll run through each component one by one, giving you the results of our benchmarking so that you can choose the best ones for you. And this is relevant whether you're building a new computer now and you know you're going to spend a lot of time playing Fortnite, or if you're playing Fortnite already and perhaps performance isn't quite where it wants to be and you're considering an upgrade. This video is designed to help you spend money in the most effective way possible and get the most bang for your buck. Anyway, let's dive straight in and look at some CPU numbers. All of the tests for the CPU and RAM were done with an RTX 3080, a GPU that's powerful enough not to limit the CPU and RAM configurations that were under test there. First up, here are my numbers from testing at 1080p medium resolution and settings. First of all, you can see the 5600G down at the bottom of the chart. There's not a huge gap there at medium settings. It's still doing 220 frames per second average, and it's got reasonably respectable 1% and 0.1% low values as well. The i3-12100 is next up, and you can see it puts together a very respectable 240 frames per second average. And although those 0.1% and 1% lows are a little lower, perhaps 36 frames per second for the 0.1%, that's actually a feature that runs throughout of this testing, and it just seems to be a feature of Fortnite that you are going to run into those lower 0.1% lows, and it seems very, very hard to eliminate them from a hardware perspective. Moving up, we've got the Ryzen 5800X, followed by the 5600X, and then I've mocked up by cutting it down to four cores, disabling cores in Ryzen Master, and running again. And you can see that really doesn't impact the average at all. What it does do is it does harm that 1%, 0.1% lows, indicating less consistent performance overall. However, if you look at the consistency between the 6-core and the 8-core variants, they're basically the same. There's not going to be any perceptible difference between those at all. And that means that basically we're not seeing scaling with number of cores in Fortnite beyond six cores. We can confirm that when we look again at the slightly higher performing Alder Lake CPUs. These are the Intel 12th generations. We've got the i5-12600 putting together 260 frames per second average, which basically matches the uh, Ryzen 5600X and 5800X. And it's got pretty decent 1% and 0.1% lows as well. And finally, the i7-12700K is the highest performance CPU we've tested. It gets near to 280 frames per second average and does also post really strong 1% and 0.1% low overall. Moving on then, having a quick look at the 1080p high results, we can see that there's less of a stepping between the CPUs. We've again got the uh, Alder Lake CPUs at the top, putting together very similar results. Then we've got the Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 5 variants, and again that step-down version of the Ryzen uh, with just four cores active, you can see that it's not actually impacting its performance versus six or eight cores to a great degree. And finally, we're bringing up the tail, we've got the 12100 and then the 5600G putting in pretty similar performances there. You're not going to differentiate those two CPUs in actual gameplay. So overall then, I'd suggest that an i5 or a Ryzen 5 CPU is a really strong starting point for a system to play Fortnite. But if you are on a tight budget, you can't ignore the fact that the i3-12100 is a $100 CPU, and yet there's not a vast gap in performance between it and some of the more expensive options in this test. Therefore, if you're cash constrained, I'd strongly suggest going for the i3-12100. It does a really good job throughout, and it was very, very playable through all the testing as well. Let's move on then and have a look at RAM. First up, we've got RAM speed test. We did this testing with the i5-12600, and that's really just to dispel a bit of a myth about Intel CPUs that they don't respond to RAM speed. You can see from our testing here at 1080p medium, where we really are exposing CPU performance, that there's actually some pretty impressive stepping between the various RAM speed options that we've tested here. We see it go from 210 frames per second average using 2400 megahertz RAM 
through to at 3600 megahertz you're getting 265 frames per second average and those 0.1% and 1% numbers have strengthened as well indicating more consistent frame times and then by moving up to the fastest RAM we have available which is a 4400 megahertz CL19 kit that's just running at XMP and it is even in gear 2 mode here so it's not been finely tuned uh, it's just an XMP profile and that gets us 300 frames per second and again a strengthening of those 0.1% and 1% lows. Compare that back to the mid-range and slower RAM and you can see that's a substantial increase in performance. Overall then, this level of RAM speed scaling was really surprising to me. It's one of the most RAM sensitive games I've tested. And so therefore I will recommend that you optimise RAM given your CPU, but do bear in mind the caveats around RAM compatibility. Very high speed RAM sometimes won't run on XMP and might require manual tuning. There are also circumstances, particularly on Ryzen, whereby when you overstep the one-to-one -one ratio of Infinity Fabric and the memory controller clock with RAM, you actually suffer a big detriment in performance and a big step down. So you do need to be cautious of that. Nonetheless, RAM up around 3600 megahertz CL16 with a good XMP profile and nice tight timings will provide a really nice performance boost for Fortnite. So that'd be my recommended uh, option as the click and uh, forget. Or if you do want to delve into RAM uh, tuning and RAM tweaking, it is a time consuming and often frustrating process, but it can yield really great results. So if you want to try a little bit of RAM overclocking in order to tweak out that last bit of performance from a high performance CPU, it is worth your time on Fortnite. We've also tested capacities, 8, 16, and 32 gigabyte capacities on Fortnite, and we don't see any strong trends or scaling with capacity. There's also no improvement in those 0.1% uh, and 1% lows, so it doesn't seem like it massively improves frame time consistency. Even eight gigabytes is plenty to actually run this game well. However, we'd always recommend a 16 gigabyte kit for any gaming PC in uh, 2022, and uh, you can get affordable two stick kits. One thing to make sure is that you do always run dual channel RAM, it makes a massive difference to performance and that's something we'd certainly recommend for any gaming PC. So get those two stick kits and you'll have a really good uh, performing system. Even if you can only afford 16 gigabytes, it's really not a problem for this game. If you're liking the work we've done for this video, please do just take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel. Please do also share this video with your friends. You never know, it might help settle some arguments or perhaps just inflame some new ones. Nevertheless, it really helps our channel. It helps us bring you this information about the best possible parts, even down to specific games that you might particularly care about. Let's move on then and take a look at GPU testing. GPUs are always where you're gonna get the most performance for your money. It's the defining feature of any gaming PC. And Fortnite, although it perhaps looks graphically simple, it's deceptively hard on graphics cards. And I was actually amazed at uh, the load it was putting on some of the graphics cards we were testing here and the results we got. I was expecting higher frame rates out of some of them than we actually achieved. First of all then, at 1080p high, you can see, first of all, we tested the Vega 7 graphics out of the 5600G. I was really eager to see if this was gonna be a viable processor to run this game without a graphics card. Unfortunately, in my opinion, it's really not. The performance, as you can see, at 1080p high was really pretty abysmal. It's got very low performance, 30 frames per second, um, and it's not really playable. Stepping up to the 6500 XT, which is an entry-level graphics card, has been much maligned in reviews, and honestly, testing for this game, I kind of understood why. It didn't perform well at all in this game. 1080p high, we can see we're getting 90 frames per second average, but it's really the 0.1% and 1% lows that were utterly abysmal and really did spoil the uh, flow of the game. Some big stutters and hangs quite regularly, which made the game unpleasant to play. And I really can't recommend this card for Fortnite at any resolution, unfortunately. The 6600 XT also underperformed. It wasn't quite as bad as the 6500 XT, but I did notice significant problems with it. And that's a shame because it's a card that I've reviewed well elsewhere, and I know that in other games it really can perform decently. We had some difficulties with the uh, drivers. I know that um, there's a recommended set of drivers, which are what we use, and those are the numbers that we're presenting here for that GPU. You can see really that it should outperform an RTX 2060 six gigabyte but the 2060 was actually the better card. It performed equally in terms of average FPS, but it has much better frame time consistency at 0.1% and 1% lows are a little bit higher than the uh, 6600 XT there. The RTX 3060 Ti is always a strong performer and there's no difference in this. You can see it's exceeding 144 frames per second. You're getting 155, 156 frames per second out of that card and decent other metrics as well. Up next is the RTX 3070, which performs actually significantly better in terms of average frame rate than the uh, 3060 Ti here, getting about 180 frames per second. Then we've got the RTX 3080, 
and the RTX 3080 Ti. The 3080 Ti is running the CPU ragged at this point, getting 230 frames per second. But that does really seem to be kind of the bitter edge of performance at these settings. Dropping the settings down to medium, you can see we get better performance out of those lower tier cards. The 6500 XT still wasn't playable in my opinion, a lot of stutters and hangs on that card. The 6600 XT became much more playable at medium uh, settings. The RTX 2060 Ti gets a decent frame boost up to 180 frames per second. And you can see the 3060 Ti steps up, it goes up massively gaining 80 frames per second. We get up at 235 frames per second in medium settings. The 3070, 3080 and 3080 Ti I would regard all as overkill. You're spending a lot more money than on the 3060 Ti or even a 3060. If you're going to lower settings, you're going to get great frame rates. We're approaching the limit of a 240 hertz monitor um, and high frame rate competitive gaming with a mid-range RTX GPU. And that's what I'd advise you get. It really isn't worth spending the money, particularly on things like the 3080 or the 3080 Ti when you're going to be dropping settings at 1080p anyway. That's where you really want to focus in on your RAM and your CPU to make sure you're getting every frame possible. So overall then, I was really disappointed with the performance of the AMD GPUs in Fortnite. I know they can perform a lot better than this in other games and tests that I've run with them. In particular, the 6600 XT is generally a very good card, but here it seems to underperform significantly. I re-ran tests to verify numbers, tried a number of fixes, like ensuring I was running the correct uh, Fortnite recommended driver version from AMD, which I was, and a number of other tweaks and fixes, but none of them really seemed to raise performance to a level I'd expect. If you know where I've gone wrong, please do feel free to let me know in the comments below. Uh, but in the meantime, I will say that if you have a choice, you should err towards an NVIDIA card. They do seem to offer much more consistent and better performance in Fortnite than the AMD cards at present. Moving up to 1440p, again, we see wider stepping here between the cards, particularly at 1440p high. We're now dropping into the point where the 2060 and the 6600 XT are dropping below playable levels, certainly at high settings. 3060 Ti does okay at around 100 frames per second. And the 3070 and 3080 obviously do pretty well. They're getting 140 frames per second. We're back up into sort of acceptable high frame rate gaming. The 3080 Ti obviously here is stretching its lead because uh, it does perform much better at higher resolutions. Shifting over to 1440p medium settings, again we can see that really the 6600 XT, 6500 XT and to an extent the 2060, they're not really meeting 144 frames per second. Um, we'd suggest you run them at 1080p, that's really where these cards shine. The 3060 Ti starts to do okay, that's exceeding 144 frames per second at medium settings. The 3070 does well and so does the 3080, the 3080 exceeding 240 frames per second average. Again though, note that with all of these we're still experiencing quite low, 0.1% and 1% lows. And as I said at the beginning, that does seem to be a feature of Fortnite. You're going to experience those slight variances in frame times and there doesn't seem to be any particular configuration of hardware and RAM that we've experienced that actually eliminates that. It's just a feature of the way the game is uh, coded and runs unfortunately. And finally up at 4K we've just got the higher end cards in here just to show where the sort of 60 frames per second cutoff exists. On uh, high settings the 3060 Ti, 3070 perform adequately and the 3080 and 3080 Ti are doing pretty well at um, high settings. You can see that if you're wanting 144 frames per second in 4K for some reason in Fortnite, you're going to need a 3080 or a 3080 Ti to do that. What we'd really suggest is that you start to use features like DLSS to run at a lower internal resolution and uh, upscale that resolution to get acceptable frame rates. Really folks, what I'd recommend is if you're running Fortnite, you'd focus in on 1080p as a sensible resolution to run it. 1440p, if that's your monitor, you can get a higher end graphics card and either upscale or just accept a slightly lower frame rate. At 4K, it doesn't really make a great deal of sense. What I suggest is you leverage DLSS and actually upscale from a lower resolution. You get the best of both worlds there. You'll get that sharp image quality, but you'll also get much higher frame rates. And I think that's probably a worthwhile usage of uh, an RTX card and DLSS in this instant. You could also try FSR with some of the more powerful AMD cards. I'm sure a 6800 XT or something of that nature would do a really good job. Unfortunately, I haven't got one on hand to test. So to round up then, from the data we've gathered, 
I'm going to make three recommendations at entry level, mid range and high end to get you the best combination of components. And if you're confused about exactly which parts to choose, that's where buildpicker.com comes in. We've put all of this information together so that you've got one click builds that find automatically the best pricing for the variety of components that you need and inserts them into our builds on a daily basis. You can filter for Fortnite to see the PCs we recommend to run this game well. And we've integrated all of this information plus our testing of loads of other games and components to make sure that you're getting the best PCs for the price. So at the entry level for Fortnite, I'd recommend an i3-12100. It's simply the best performing CPU at about $100. It massively outperforms anything that AMD can offer at that price point, and it's pretty close in uh, performance to the i5s and Ryzen 5s as well. Pair that with 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz RAM, and I'm saying 3200 megahertz there just because with some of the cheaper motherboards and with a lot of CPUs, there's much better guarantee of compatibility at that speed, and you're gonna be GPU limited anyway because of budget, so you'll get plenty of performance out of that CPU with relatively cost-effective RAM. And the GPU side, I'd recommend an RTX 3050 or an RTX 3060. They're really strong 1080p GPUs, and if you're lowering settings anyway to increase FPS, they'll do really well at 1080p, and you'll have a great time with Fortnite with that as an entry-level system. In the mid-range, you can look for an i5 or a Ryzen 5, and when we say i5, we mean the Intel Alder Lake, and equally the Ryzen 5600 and 5600X are really strong options. We've shown that 6 cores is plenty for this game, and you can pair these CPUs with 16 gigabytes of 3600 MHz CL16 RAM for a really solid basis that will achieve really high frame rates. In order to maximize that, the recommended GPU, I would say, would be the RTX 3060 Ti, or if you can find one, an RTX 3070. Again, at 1080p, they'll allow you to push slightly lowered settings to high settings, at 144 to 200 frames per second. You'll be getting a really strong, consistent performance, and it'll be a very competitive PC for gaming at a very good price point. And finally, at the high end, the i7 12th generation is going to be the best performing CPU, the i7 12700 or 12700K. If you can't quite stretch to that, then the i5 12600K is a really strong option. You can pair that with 32 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz or faster RAM and an RTX 3070 Ti or even a 3080 to get a really strong 1440p gaming machine and you'll get high frame rates and have plenty of flexibility and versatility as well. If you're wanting to stream your gameplay from the same system, this will be a great system to do that. Although I should mention at this point that the entry level and mid range systems I've suggested are perfectly capable of streaming your gameplay as well. So overall then, I really hope you found this video useful. We've proven that you don't need a supercomputer to run Fortnite well. There's some really cost effective components that do a great job. I've also demonstrated builds that will perform really well at pretty much any given price point, and they're online over at buildpicker.com now. The advantage of that site is that it will automatically select the lowest priced compatible and equivalent component and substitute it into the build. So for example, you'll be getting the best value power supply, the best value RAM kit, or the best value motherboard, all of which meet the overall requirements of the build. That way you can be ensured that you're getting compatible, cost effective, and really strong PC for your money. So check out buildpicker.com.